Well, you know, fellas, it's like they say, when he's hot, he's hot, right? What did we talk about back here? I said, look, guys, we're going to come up here and we're going to start consolidating. We were looking at spot. I said, look, we're going to come up here and we're going to start consolidating. Now, we haven't broken down yet, but we are kind of getting weaker and weaker and weaker on lower and lower volume. Okay, we're losing momentum. And we're just kind of proving what I was saying that all of the narrative about sanctions was turning into a buy the rumor, sell the news kind of a trade event because uranium is fundamentally bullish by itself. It doesn't need help. It's still undervalued. It still has a lot of upside. And all of these kind of news events day to day uh, are just kind of creating excuses for day traders to get in and out to buy and sell the rumor, right? So uh, that's where we are. I think we're running out of steam. I think we are not taking the next leg up until we at least come back here and test this 50 again, okay? I think that's more than reasonable. I think that's healthy. And you have to remember, we just took a big leg up. I mean, look at the move. Look how big this move was. All right, we took 40% move in no time. All right, so of course we're going to do some consolidation for a little bit. Energy Fuels is telling the same story as everything else was, okay? Starting with spot, starting with the, the spot price of uranium. You're kind of running out of steam, and that's okay. That's not a bad thing. You got to understand, guys, that we just had, you know, <laughs> a 92% run, okay, in no time. So, of course, it's going to take a break. Of course, it's going to consolidate. People are being way too short-term bullish. I think what you're having, you know, all these talks of these sanctions. I mean, people are buying the rumors, selling the news. I mean, all this stuff is baked into the cake. Uranium's too bullish. It doesn't need help, all right? Now, it's just up to the charts, all right? This stuff is going to be up here one day, all right? But for now, if you want to add, do it down here. Don't do it here, okay? Unless you get clear volume to chase, right? If you get volume up here like this on a breakup, then yeah, feel free to buy, okay? <laughs> Otherwise, just wait for it to eventually kind of roll over and try to catch one of these trend lines, right? Get on the 50, get on the 200. And just to put it into perspective, if you didn't watch my last video, you need to because I explained how to chart the market, how to chart the sector as a whole to find these buy zones. Because let's say you don't care about any other uranium company. The only uranium company that's important to you is energy fuels. Well, you need to be watching NextGen and Cameco and all these others to find out where to buy energy fuels. Okay, Because look, you come down and test the 200 on energy fuels, that's 25%. Right? You go to NextGen, right? what's 25% for NextGen? It's all the way down here. Okay, you understand it's the lower trend. It's below the 200. So that's why if you are paying attention and you're charting the sector as a whole, maybe by the time energy fuels hits its 200, next gen's hitting the lower trend, right? And then maybe at the same time, Cameco is hitting its 50. So even though these things don't fall nearly as much, they hit primary support and key levels at the same time, all right? That's why you need to be charting all of these things to find your buy price. That's why I'm telling you, all right? Because, and you know, we don't necessarily have to go down. We can go sideways, right? Because when you chart sideways, first of all, that's very bullish by itself. That's consolidation. It's range bound. It's also predictable. It's healthy. It gives your RSI and all everything else time to cool off and chill out and get strength to go up again. That's good, okay? It also gives time for your moving averages to catch up right? So you might be able to buy it right here. That'd be a great buy. And remember, a lot of these prices are going to be really great uh, under, say, any of these trend lines. I mean, give me an opportunity to buy energy fuels, you know, it's anything close to $7 and I'm jumping on it, all right? Anything close. At the same time, if it were to break up in a big way and it has volume bars up this tall, I'm chasing it. <laughs> so, that's why you just need to chart things and be patient. But it's very clear right now that, you know, we're, we're about to, good God, what happened here? Yeah. So we're just going to roll over for a little bit, guys. We're going to consolidate for a while. I'm guessing for at least a few weeks before we take the next leg up. It's a good thing. Now, look, let's just take a quick look at LEU because we talked about this before and let's see what happened. We came down. 
We touched this trend line perfectly on the dot, on the money, came back up, hit this trend line on the dot, on the money, not once but twice. And what did I tell you here? Sold, got out for reasons I explained. Came back up, told you if you took this trade out here, good for you, but get out because what's it gonna do? It's gonna roll over and it's exactly what it did. It just shows you that <laughs> we're charting this all very, very well. Um, but to recap, look, with these sanctions on Russia, this company no longer has access to enriched uranium, which means two thirds of their business model disappeared. It's gone, all right, gone. And until that changes, this company's dead in the water, all right? So that's why I told you guys, if anybody bought down here, then when I made this video, I said, look, you need to sell, you need to sell, because look what it's doing. Now it's rolling over, putting in an H pattern. Look, I'll buy it down here to speculate. At the end of the day, just remember, this company very well could be the company, okay? Very well. But if that happens, we're going to know about it, right? We're going to know. The market's going to tell us. We're going to get news. We're going to hear, right? And, and it's going to be okay. We can make a safe entry because right now all you're doing is, is, is just trying to get lucky, all right? Because if you buy LEU or hold LEU right now, you have the risk legitimately of falling as far as it wants to. I mean, for sure here, this is my this is my price to buy right here at $20. But still, you got to understand, unless something changes for this company, they're dead in the water. And they don't even actually have the contract with the Dep Department of Energy anymore, right? And they're coming up um, for a new contract, and there's competition. And somebody else might get it. You understand? Silex might get it, all right? We talked about Silex down here, and they're up. Now they're back in this trend. Look. We see what uranium does as it consolidates. I very well may start taking positions in the Silex now. I like that it's back above here. But we're going to see what the overall market does for the next couple of weeks. There's no reason to FOMO. All right? But it is starting to look good. It looks like there is some rotation. People getting out of LEU in the Silex. Okay? And remember, if you own Cameco, you own Silex. Because Cameco owns almost 50% of Silex anyway. <laughs> okay? So... Uh, that's kind of a double whammy right there, and it really makes it even more enticing. So uh, keep keep this all in mind, guys. There's no reason to try to, I just the reason I bring this up is because I see people on Uranium Twitter and all these places, and they just can't wait to buy more LEU because they act like it. You know, nothing ever changed. Nothing, no negative news ever came out, but it did, guys. A lot of really negative news came out on this company. Okay, and so until positive news comes out. You need to get out while you can. Talked about MP materials right here. Made a video all about this, all about China, all about rumor, right? And what happened? We already got a 20% swing trade already. Already. I even gave you the sell prices. $73 your first target, $100 your second target. I mean, <laughs> we're doing this one after another, after another, after another, after another. It's just that easy, guys, right? So just be confident because uh, this is how it works. Uh, now, this was a great swing trade, right? But the reason that I'm not going to hold this as an investor, one of the reasons I gave you your out prices to begin with is because, yeah, this has uh, got a good little narrative going forward of 15% Western uh, rare earth. Uh, but the truth is they have strong ties to China. All right, so this isn't something you really want to hold long term. This is something that will benefit from narrative. Okay, this is a buy the rumor, sell the news kind of company, and you can make nice gains in a short amount of time by playing it. If you want exposure to rare earth on a more long term investment speculation basis, I would suggest something like Vital Metals. Okay, it's getting some movement upwards. Uh, this is the ticker for the uh, over the counter, but I actually got in. Um, I told you guys, I'd tell you when I get into something, I did get in and we'll see how it goes. I got in at, uh, 0.04, 4 cents. Exactly. And, uh, I'm ready to ride and we'll see what, how it goes. Um, but this company does look good on paper. It's got a lot going for it and uh, we'll see how it shakes, shakes out. Even Arian phosphate. We talked about that one right here, right? Well, look where it is now. However, even though the price is coming up and it's breaking above this key level, there's no volume, okay? So there's no indication of an actual breakout happening yet. So if you haven't got in yet, no need to FOMO, okay? You can wait for it maybe to come all the way back down here. That'd be really, really nice, right? That's a strong buy if you can do that. Now, 
Consequently, just like everything else, if it breaks up and it also gets volume, okay, nice volume, feel free to chase it because this, this company, it's probably a 10X2. It really is. Uh, they're sitting on some nice grade ore and uh, it's going to be needed more than ever. It's in the Northern Hemisphere. I mean, it's in Canada. I mean, this is, this is a strong buy for me. It's all about when you get in. See if you can get in down here. Potash and fertilizer, um, still looking real strong, still looking good. Uh, NTR, you see how they're all kind of charting the same way, right? They're even kind of charting the same way uranium is. They're kind of charting in this tight, losing momentum kind of uptrend. I think something might break soon. <laughs> Um, I think this is still very bullish long term. This is this is all good to own, um, but there are signs of uh, consolidation coming, right? So it wouldn't surprise me still to come down and, and test a level like this. All right. So if you're holding, don't be surprised to come down here and test. If you're looking to add, score right about right here. Okay, something like sixty-eight, sixty-nine dollars. Um, first sell zone still one hundred eight. Should probably talk more about oil stocks. Occidental has come back for a retest of a major level. You can see how key it is here. Um, yeah, if you're looking to get in, this is the spot to do it. We're gonna touch and go on the indices real quick. Of everything I've talked about in all of my videos to this point, there are really only two things that I've gotten wrong, and that was where the indices would bounce from, and that was the platinum sprout price, all right? Because when we talked about platinum, uh, we talked about this double bottom right here. Remember that? I drew it just like this. And then we had a projected target going right here to 1330. But all it did was peekaboo and it crashed on us, all right? And um, I didn't expect that to roll over, so I got that wrong. However, it was inconsequential for us because we were using it for our Sabine Stillwater trade, which was also a double bottom. Now, that trade carried through. Because if we take our double bottom, they gave us what 430. Do it again from the breakout for yep, see <laughs> almost exactly on the money 436. So that was a textbook double bottom measured move trade. It's a beautiful trade. How much did we make on that? All right, now 30 percent easy peasy measured move. If you want back in, kind of watch these trend lines again. The, the moving averages be good buys. This is going up long term. All right, so even though I missed it on the NASDAQ by 527 points, 4%, on the S&P, I actually only missed it by 1.3%, 1.35, 55 points. That's very, very close. I almost nailed that, so that's not bad. Now, with all that being said, this is a dead count bounce, guys. This is the market playing chicken with the Fed, and I think um, the more this goes on, the more I'm starting to realize that... <laughs> Powell may have his Volcker moment, and he may actually push interest rates pretty high, faster than anybody expects. And this game of chicken is going to roll over, and you're just going to get an ABC decline. And we're going to end up down here for sure. I, I still think that um, these March 2020 levels are the ultimate, the ultimate zone, with maybe this 3578 zone um, being a possible first. I mean, just look at the bond market. I mean, look what's happening. 10-year, 30-year. We've got a spread of 0.9. <laughs> That's how close they are to inverting, all right? And I just want to, this is a weekly chart, okay? I'm going to zoom out for you, all right? Look at this trend. Look how strong this trend is. This goes back to 1981. You paying attention? This is a 41-year trend. 41-year trend. Of interest rates on the 10 year all right and here we are approaching it very quickly one more day like today and it's there but what do you think happens when we get there do we break that 41 year trend all right we're getting close guys either the fed comes in and saves the day with qe infinity and ymr inflation or he goes full volker all right and uh 20 interest rates here we come I mean, you just got to get ready because this is how much time you have left.